morning, folks. Welcome to KTalk 6.30 a.m. It's 8.06 here uh, in Utah. Fortunate this morning we got the Alex Jones Show. I mean, Alex Newman Show. I do that so often because he's here on the air and I see it all the time. Alex Newman Show. We've got Alex Newman on, the international correspondent for the New American Magazine, as well as other things, an educator, a speaker, uh, a radio and television personality, a man who knows the news inside the news and the news beyond the headlines. Welcome to the program this morning, Alex. Again, I apologize for saying Jones. I've done that about six or seven times. No, that's no problem at all. Thanks very much for having me, Paul. You know, we've talked about some of the stories you've written in the last week, and, and there's one that uh, I'd like to talk about least for them, if it's possible. We may not have time. We've got it. We have a, a global uh, warming uh, climate change story that that tied together with everything else we've heard is is really uh, d- to me a huge disinformation campaign and for the purpose of some hidden agenda that these uh, globalists have where they want to uh, de- determine how to manipulate uh, redistribution of wealth and and uh, control uh, of the world economy as well as your freedoms we need to talk about that there's another one uh, the US that the United Nations is plot is plotting a war on f- free speech to stop extreme and as extremism online and uh, and I thought the story about Obama attacking Senator Rand Paul for protecting the Fourth Amendment I think we probably ought to try to get to that if we can but let's start out with this one I think a lot of people don't know about and it's uh, a story you just wrote a couple of days ago Tennessee supports gold depository fearing a monetary crisis I saw a uh, a video by Rand Paul if I have time I'm going to try to play some of that on the air it's fairly lengthy it's over a half an hour but the information that he provides on where we really are headed monetarily he calls it uh, he calls it financial martial law and he and he cites uh, Alex uh, some of the things that have happened through the years with back in Nixon back in 71 and some of the things more recent back to FDR the taking of everyone's gold and the fact that, that the government pretty well does whatever it wants the bailout of 2008 where they stole money literally out of our pockets to to award and pay big banks uh, that they called too big to fail and now these negative interest rates uh, those are all interesting but what is this all about with the Tennessee the Tennessee supporting a gold depository well, I, I think the issue is inseparable from some of the things you just described, right? We're obviously uh, anybody who's been paying any attention here these last few years can see that the economy is not in good shape. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the Federal Reserve and the federal government are telling us that uh, everything's fine and, you know, so and so, so on and so forth. But they also told us if we liked our doctor, we could keep them. If we liked our insurance, we could keep it. Uh, you know, they, they just lie all the time. So the real issue here is that. Um, the United States is probably heading towards some very tough times economically. Um, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but at some point, um, probably within the not too distant future. And uh, legislators in Tennessee understand this apparently, and they said so in the resolution. You know, they say, uh, "Well, people are worried about uh, economic instability. We're worried about monetary instability." And so, as a hedge against that, a lot of people are buying gold. Uh, and silver and other precious metals. This is what they say in the resolution. And um, as a state, uh, we ought to consider providing some sort of uh, mechanism to help the people of Tennessee and then maybe even people from outside of the state uh, to protect their assets. And, you know, gold and silver historically have been uh, very good assets just in terms of, of kind of insurance, right? If, if your Federal Reserve notes go to zero, uh, you know, they can't print more gold and silver. So that's always. Uh, a plus side, and I think they probably got some inspiration from Texas. I actually wrote an article about this last year. Uh, they passed a law down in Texas. It was signed into law by Governor Abbott, a uh, great conservative. And um, basically, this law establishes a gold depository, a gold backed bank that will allow citizens to bypass the Federal Reserve system. So it's going to operate uh, very differently than a traditional bank, right? They're not going to be creating money out of thin air. They're not going to be making all kinds of loans based on uh, money that they don't have in the vault. But 
Uh, this will allow people to engage in commerce using gold. Uh, so this is a huge, huge development. I mean, this is an earth-shattering development. You can be sure that there's central bankers somewhere uh, furrowing their brows and saying, oh, goodness, what are we going to do about this? Uh, and that's good. And I think Tennessee uh, was probably inspired by what they did in Texas. Unfortunately, they didn't go far enough. And uh, they do have some other bills in Tennessee right now. One, uh, for example, would treat um, gold and silver as currency for taxation purposes. Right now in Tennessee, if you buy gold or silver, you have to pay sales tax on it. Uh, a number of states, including Utah, uh, if I understand correctly, I know a number of states have done removed the sales taxes on gold and silver bullion so that it could be used as currency, right? You don't tax gold and money uh, and silver money as if it were, uh, you know, some kind of uh, thing that you bought at the store for your own personal consumption. Well, so you I know, you've got to allow the, the opportunity and the option to whatever le level of government, local, state, and federal, they need more money to operate. They just seem oh, yeah. they just don't seem to have enough. And so they yeah. need to tax whatever they can and anything they can and they seem to do pretty well at it. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, the, the federal government even it, it's, it's not even enough to just tax everything. They need to borrow uh, 17 trillion dollars from the communist Chinese dictatorship so that we can redistribute money to China and to Africa and to uh, Latin America and to other things. Uh, so, yeah, you know, it's really quite ridiculous, and, and the economic situation that we find ourselves in is totally unsustainable. So I think Tennessee legislators are just thinking ahead here. And the, one of the things that was so amazing about this, Paul, is that um, every single vote was in favor of the resolution. There wasn't one vote opposed to this resolution. It passed unanimously in the State House of Representatives, passed unanimously in the State Senate, and then it was signed by the governor. So, you know, that's amazing. That's real bipartisanship working on real issues. Now they need to take the next step right now, rather than just expressing their support for a gold depository, they need to go ahead and actually build one, uh, as they're doing in Texas right now. They're accepting um, bids to build this institution. And so I think Texas is really um, starting something big here. And I think it's about time that the American people wake up and realize that we need to think outside the box here. The federal government is not going to save us. In fact, the federal government seems bound and determined to destroy us. And so if we need to act through our state legislators to protect ourselves, then that's what we need to do. And Tennessee seems to be getting that. Uh, Utah seems to be on the correct path here, at, at least uh, in a certain sense. And Texas is certainly taking a great leap forward when it comes to um, giving options to their citizens to protect their assets, to operate commercially outside of the Federal Reserve System, which, again, is really unstable. Uh, you know, you mentioned at the beginning of the program uh, during this economic crisis that it's almost hard to comprehend this. They printed up $27 trillion. That's more than, that's far more than the entire national GDP of the United States. And they handed it out to their cronies, to the big banks, to the banks in Europe, to the banks in Asia, to government owned banks, to central banks, to corporations. So, you know, this is clearly a, a system that's not going to last. It, it's a giant fraud, if you ask me. And it's, it's great to see states taking action against it. And yet, for some reason, people continue to trust their government. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, it's less and less. But you're right. Unfortunately, we do still have, uh, you know, a lot of people that uh, haven't kind of woken up yet. You know, there, there's still uh, some people who I think 6% of the population still trust the media. It's hard to imagine what they're thinking. Um, <laughs> well, but, I just uh, read you know, yesterday on the air that, uh, and, and people were, I, I kind of put it out as a question to some listeners. Where do you think that the uh, confidence level is of the American people with Congress? And people yeah. were guessing at 20 percent and 18 percent, which is still in incredibly ridiculously low. But the Gallup poll just came out. 11 percent is the popularity level of Americans with their legislators, with their congressmen and their senators. Right. They're about as popular as uh, cockroaches and headlights. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, all right. So. With what you have uh, been talking about here, uh, I, I'm really intrigued. I, I wonder if any of our Utah legislators are listening in on what's going on in Tennessee and Texas in this regard, because uh, what, an, what a novel idea. Now, just to refresh my historical memory, you're a heck of a historian. In my historical studies, and that was my minor in college, I hated history in, in high school, but I got a great history professor that made history come alive when I was in college, and so I switched my minor because of that class, and I continued to learn more and more. But I remember that back in the 1800s, 
uh, just about anybody could could create their own currency and people started ranking currencies according to how popular they were or how secure they were but those currencies that were actually backed by gold and or silver were the currencies that that survived and that people had confidence in there was a there was in the LDS church history many many years ago there was a a thing called uh, the Kirtland Safety Society it was actually a bank in Kirtland Ohio and initially it was very secure but then uh, the, the founder of the Mormon Church uh, Joseph Smith came out and said hey th- this is speculation I'm withdrawing my support and I'm su- suggesting that people uh, not listen to this well what had happened the Kirtland Safety Society had gone to the state of Ohio and had asked for a uh, a banking charter for their bank as well as f- uh, for their currency and uh, when they were p- initially proposing that it be based on on hard asset like gold it was fine but when they started using specie not backed by gold and when they started uh, following the uh, trend in the United States during a tremendous uh, very very bad uh, depression many of the banks went down who were supporting these uh, specie many banks were were issuing their own specie their own banknotes their own currencies and many, many uh, things failed, and many uh, LDS people, many of the early Mormons lost a great deal of money and, and therefore a lot of confidence in the church. Many people left the church over that. But that wasn't just the church. There were many currencies. Isn't that true that many a bank could come up with their own currency? That's right. Yeah, actually, we had uh, uh, been a very interesting period in history after Andrew Jackson killed the second bank of the United States. And, you know, people don't realize that was a huge issue back then, you know, the, the, whether we should have a central bank, what the central bank should do. This was all, you know, at the top of the political agenda uh, back in the 1800s and, and even during the days of the founders. But uh, after Andrew Jackson succeeded in killing the second bank of the United States, we really had uh, this kind of interesting time in the United States where you had almost a free market in money. Uh, you had, you're right, private banks creating their own uh, different types of currencies, and, and people would decide whether they wanted to accept those currencies based on how trustworthy the bank was. Uh, you know, are they going to have my gold if I take this certificate there? If I have confidence that they will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll happily accept uh, your little depository receipt for gold at such and such bank. If I never heard of the bank, if I don't trust it, I may not be willing to accept it. So it was really interesting time period. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of the more uh, Austrian school type economists who really believe in, in free markets, you know, abolish the central bank, we shouldn't have a central planning committee deciding what interest rates ought to be. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of um, support among that kind of community for a free market in money. And frankly, I think it would be a very good idea. Um, certainly the system we have is not working, right? I mean, they've destroyed 97% of our purchasing power since we got the Federal Reserve 100 years ago. Wow. So something's got to give. Well, you know, it, isn't the state of Tennessee, the House, the House Joint Resolution 516, isn't that actually more legal than the Federal Reserve System? I mean, isn't that uh, – yeah, they are truly the a government agency versus the federal, quote, unquote, Federal Reserve is a private – interest that since that's right i mean the color of law i guess that's exactly right and you know a lot of people don't realize that it's called the federal reserve people think oh it must be a federal reserve and actually it's not federal and it doesn't have any reserves and uh, you know they brag about this so there was a lawsuit some years ago right after the big economic crisis uh bloomberg and some others wanted to figure out what was going on at the new york federal reserve bank which is you know the most powerful of the regional feds and uh, they filed a measure in court. I still have a copy of it because I was just blown away by how open they were. They said, hey, we don't have to obey Freedom of Information Act request. That stuff's for the government. We're not the government. We're a private corporation owned by private shareholders who select our board of governors and our board of directors. So, you know, sorry, we don't have to obey your little Freedom of Information Act. We're a private company. And, um, you know, it, it's it, how the system operates. And the Constitution specifically says in Article 1, Section 10, that no state may make anything, that means anything, not a single thing, uh, legal tender except gold and silver uh, as, a, as a payment in, uh, in tender of debt. So, you know, we have uh, a situation here where we have no constitutional money at this point. Uh, Alex, uh, Congress never had the ability I'm gonna have to, to delegate that to the Fed. We're going to be cut off by a, a commercial by the computer. We'll be right back. Tax burden on Utah families. 
Governor Herbert raised taxes six times since 2009, taking an additional $625 million out of the pockets of hardworking Utahns. When asked if he would sign a pledge to stop raising taxes, his answer was alarming when he replied. I, I can answer that and say no, because it's leadership. Uh, it's an economic engine. Let's all make it clear to Governor Herbert that taxing our dedicated workforce is not the government's economic engine, nor is it a sign of good leadership. On the other hand, Jonathan Johnson, Republican candidate for governor, signed a pledge promising Utahns he will not raise taxes. I encourage you to vote for a candidate who will stretch our tax dollars, not raise them again and again. Paid for by Johnson for Governor. Get set to save now at your local Kubota dealer. Kubota RTVX Series is the best-selling diesel utility vehicle in the industry, according to Power Products Marketing North American Utility Vehicle Market Reports, May 2014. Get long-term financing as low as 0% APR for four years on new Kubota RTVX utility vehicles. Now through June 30th, 2016. Call toll-free 1-888-465-8268 for details about costs and terms. Visit Sunset Kubota and Bonneville Equipment or find your local Kubota dealer online at utahkubotadealers.com. It's another Retirement Minute with Manny. Have you considered the potential tax obligations of leaving your IRA to your beneficiaries? What about distributions, how they could impact your taxation of Social Security benefits? And remember, at age 70 and a half, you're required to take minimum distributions. Second, an IRA requires you to take distributions whether you wish to or not. There are strategies you may be able to use to address the tax liability on IRA distributions. Let Manny Negron share some ideas that you could bring to your tax advisor. Start by visiting Manny's website, for a copy of the complimentary retirement preparation kit he shares with all of his clients. It's full of financial insights, tips, and things you can do to help retire successfully someday. Just visit retirewithmanny.com, retirewithmanny.com. Gen Wealth Advisory Group is an independent financial services firm helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of investment and insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. Saturdays in the garage from Advance Auto Parts. Oil change, huh? Sure you can handle such a tough job? You can go back to your own garage, you know. But then who'd empty out your fridge for you? <gasps> full synthetic, huh? Nice. Yeah, Advance Auto Parts had a deal. Five quarts of Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic and a premium filter for $29.99. <whistles> Smart. It's a sweet deal. Look at you, Mr. Cleanest Pistons in town. You gonna get any in the pan or just on your shirt? Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. See store for details. The following is a message from the Bud Light Party. Today, we're grabbing a few Bud Lights to talk about the serious issues, like renewable energy. There's solar, there's wind. What other weather can we put to work for Americans? How about rain energy? Can we harness the power of fog or thunder snow? That's a real thing. What if thunder snow energy could charge our cell phones? Figure it out, science. This message approved by the Bud Light Party. Raise one to right now. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer, AB, St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome back to K Talk Inside the News. We're here this morning with Alex Newman. Glad to have you, Alex. And uh, we're talking about the Federal Reserve and about Tennessee and Texas. Maybe getting uh, a little bit of common sense and, and trying to pass some legislation that will allow gold depositories in their states. Because I think those people are wise enough and ad have done enough research and investigation to learn that we are headed down a very slippery, slippery so slope in this country with the irresponsible printing of money and, and uh, manufacturing of assets out of midair, borrowing and living a lavish governmental lifestyle that is second to none in the history of the world. And they're saying, hey, it looks like a crash is imminent. At least this is what the way I interpret I hope this is the way it is. And so we've got a plan to rescue our state at a statewide level and no longer ref uh, rely on the federal government or especially we should not rely on the federal, the private Federal Reserve. Uh, good, good move forward. I hope Utah does something. Tell me the difference between this depository 
is that they'll have a bank depository and a, and a, and a regular commercial bank. Well, you know, regular commercial banks, and when I tell a lot of people this, they kind of look at me like I have three heads or something. But based on people have saved there. Alex, uh, back um, up, uh, back up just a little bit. Uh, the VIP button was not on was not uh, pressed and so we li- we missed the last uh, 10 seconds of your of your conversation okay, okay. no I, I said you're exactly right uh, basically uh, I, a lot of times when I tell people this they, they look at me like I have kind of three heads or four heads or something because it is kind of hard to believe but commercial banks a regular commercial bank um, actually creates better reserve notes out of thin air they really print money out of nothing. If you go into a commercial bank and ask to borrow money for a mortgage, they don't go into their vault and get uh, you know money that people have put in there as savings uh, and give that to you. They actually create uh, deposits out of nothing. Um, yeah, they have a reserve requirement uh, of about uh, 10% right now is I think what the Federal Reserve has set it at. So they have uh, you know a little bit of money in their vaults, but really they're loaning money uh, to the public that they've created out of thin air. It's, it's very much uh, the same as how the Federal Reserve works, uh, except they don't even need a reserve requirement, right? They can just print it out of thin air. So what this gold depository in Texas is going to do, uh, and, and the uh, legislator who, uh, who sponsored the original legislation that eventually was signed into law made this very clear, um, this bank is not going to be lending money um, that it doesn't have, right? So if you want your money lent out, you can do that. If you want them to just hold your gold reserves, they can do that, and you can transfer them to people. They're going to give, uh, you know, like checkbook type things. So if I have 10 ounces of gold in there and I'm doing business with you, Paul, and I want to send you five, I can write out a check and say, uh, you know, Paul Jensen gets five uh, ounces of gold, and uh, you can go take it to that depository and cash it. So this is going to be really completely different than how a traditional commercial bank operates. And, uh, and actually, this is an official bank of the state of Texas. So this is an actual Texas bank. Uh, it's not a private bank. It's owned by the state of Texas. And um, the idea is to just give citizens an option, uh, you know, a credible, legitimate, secure option uh, to operate commercially outside of the Federal Reserve System. So, you know, you and I could very easily do business uh, through this depository using precious metals, and we wouldn't have to rely on Federal Reserve notes that are increasingly unstable, that are being inflated away like it's nothing. And, uh, you know, right now, things are still kind of chugging along, right? Only uh, 20% unemployment. And so people think, well, what do we need that for? But when things get bad, man, are you going to wish you had uh, an option to carry out legitimate commerce in a secure way where you're not going to be looted every time you do a trade? Very good point. Hey, Alex, uh, uh, very good good topics this morning. Uh, And it's things that a lot of us don't know about. But we've already got a couple of callers who've got some questions and comments. Uh, Starting with you, Randy. Go ahead. You're on with Alex. Yes, Alex. Uh, here in Utah, they've been very progressive in this, and, and they've they've made some uh, attempts to have a credit card that you can actually use the credit card, and it'll be based on the current price that's set daily of of gold. You know, so uh, and and they have la- they want to set up a depository, but you know the, the powers that be of not real serious about it, but we have a governor candidate that's coming up in the state of Utah that's a very big on gold. He he, he runs a company and uh, he's actually he, the CEO of Overstock.com, Jonathan Johnson. Yeah, he's been he's been on the air here at K Talk uh, four times on my program. He's been on other programs as well, and we hosted the debates with Jonathan Johnson and uh, and Jim Debacus here on the air. What what do you think about that? Uh, um, he maintains part of his payroll in gold uh, in reserve. Isn't that yep. amazing? I've heard really great things about him, actually. Uh, I, I didn't even know he was running for, for governor of your great state, but I have heard really great things about the company and about the CEO and uh, about prudent preparations he's taken on behalf of his employees and their families. So, uh, you know, that's, I think, the guy, you know, I, I, I don't know – too much about him, but I think Alex, that's uh, kind of he's smart. he's actually was the underdog. He's now leading over ten per, ten points over the and, over and, Kevin uh, and Herbert. the governor here just stuck his foot in his mouth yesterday by saying, "I'll do anything for money." Yeah, with some <laughs> lobbyists. 
<laughs> well, he oh, said he good. was just joking. Now he's uh, trying to retract that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, no, you know, it's good to have people who are thinking ahead. Uh, you know, and, and I know um, I've, I've heard, again, even long before I knew he was running for governor, I heard that he had been uh, making prudent preparations in the event of economic problems for his employees and their families. And that's what wise people do, you know. Uh, even Machiavelli said, you know, man's biggest flaw is that during the calm he doesn't prepare for the tempest. So, you know, wise people uh, would be wise to prepare, and uh, certainly that's the kind of people you want in elected office, right? People who are thinking ahead, people who don't buy, you know, bogus statistics coming out of the, the lie machine in Washington, D.C. So, you know, I, I think that's really encouraging. And I know that Utah has been uh, one of the leaders in the honest currency, the sound money movement. Uh, actually, many years ago, I think it was even five or six years ago, Utah was the first article I wrote about these state efforts to restore uh, lawful, constitutional, sound money based on gold and silver. So, uh, you know, congratulations to, to all you guys, all the listeners and everybody, and uh, keep up the good work. You're helping to, uh, you know, educate the rest of the country, and that's a great thing. Yeah, this isn't an ad for uh, Jonathan Johnson, but I'm certainly going to support the man. Thank you very much, Randy, for calling in. Uh, we got a caller. Uh, Dave wanted to ask you a question about, uh, well, Trump, and this is too little too late. Go ahead, uh, Dave. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Um, here's my question for you. Um, and by the way, Dave, you know, thanks uh, thanks for the compliment, uh, calling us gentlemen, but appreciate it anyway. Okay, you bet. <laughs> um, my question is this. We finally got a candidate, Trump, that actually is for the American people, and I believe this man – can do great good for this country and he gets in to be president do you believe that it's too late for somebody to make a difference are we at that point that it's going to be too late even if we get somebody in that's actually working for us finally instead of one of the establishment goons uh, I, I don't think it's too late actually if i thought it was too late i can guarantee you i wouldn't be on this radio show i wouldn't be writing articles uh, I would be living on a ranch somewhere in the mountains, uh, far, far from uh, from other people. So, uh, I, I okay. definitely don't think it's too late. But with that said, I, I don't think um, we can put our trust in any politician. I, I know Trump has said a lot of things that make a lot of sense, and he's really taken on the establishment in a way that uh, I think has has shocked the establishment. And I think that's wonderful. Although I heard yesterday he was going to meet with uh, you know Henry Kissinger, who knows what that means. But um, I think the real key, and there's no shortcut to it, there's no politician, there's no silver bullet who's going to be able to turn this around. What it's going to take, I think, uh, and you know, this is my opinion, is a national educational effort to build an informed electorate. And um, unfortunately, the establishment controls the government schools and controls uh, you know, what remains of, of this uh, lying media establishment. But you know, we have a huge advantage on our side, and that's the truth. So you know, we don't need gazillions of dollars to, to promote propaganda. The truth stands on its own. So I don't think it's too late. I really don't. Uh, but I also don't think that um, any politician, even Trump, even if he means everything he says, and even if he's going to go straight to work for the American people, he can't turn this ship around on his own. What we need is good members of Congress who will restore uh, the U.S. Constitution and who will live up to their oath of office. Uh, we need good members of our state legislatures. We need good city commissioners and county commissioners. We need good sheriffs. And, uh, you know, there, there's no shortcut. We just we need to build up an informed electorate. We need to uh, unindoctrinate the children who are going through the government schools and even worse through these, uh, you know, Marxist factories called uh, universities. You know, it, that, you know, that's an overgeneralization. There's some good ones. But, um, you know, we have a lot of work ahead of us, and I, I don't think that – uh, Trump, even if he's you know the best intention guy out there, I don't think he's going to be able to to save this all on his own. But well, I also don't think it's too late. I, I, I've heard that for a long, long time that just the office of presidency is not as powerful as uh, powerful enough to make the reverse and changes. Yet you can have a president like this current administration who can do more damage individually as well as with those people pu pulling his puppet strings. Uh, than we ever thought was possible. Now, he's, he's just announced that he's going to come to Utah and uh, and take another $1.9 million, million acres and put it into federal control in the, in the form of a, a new national monument. You have him coming out individually and with the Education Department and the, and the DOJ saying, hey, you know what, we're going to allow not only transgender bathroom use, but we're going to go into schools and even mandate that boys and girls can use each other's dressing rooms and showers and restrooms and and uh, 
I, I, how one person feels that they have the power to do that is uh, it's it's phenomenal to me. It's mind-boggling. Yeah, um, you know, our, wrecking ball is a good term. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in, in a sense, I think this uh, this transgender decree that he did, uh, I think it's going to backfire. I, I, I don't think they were expecting the kind of massive national opposition, and hopefully, it'll get some parents, um, you know, off the couch and realizing, hey. Uh, you know, I can't. I, I said this uh, on an interview yesterday. You know, a lot of parents want to be like ostriches. They want to put their heads in the sand and say, "Well, you know, my school is okay. My kid's school is okay." No, it's not. You know, this is a symptom of a systemic problem, and parents need to protect their kids from this. And I hope Obama's uh, little transgender decree and all the other craziness, the Common Core, they shoved down on uh, what was it, 47 states initially. I hope all of this will wake parents up, and um, really, we can start taking the country back. You know, let me ask you um, a question now. Go ahead, go ahead, Dave. Uh, finish up. Okay. One one thing I just want to bring up. You brought up the transgender, uh, which is a ludicrous thing that he's trying to push on us. Um, perfect example of what a failure it is. Target announced that they were going to allow this. Look how far their stocks have fallen, and the complaints and the backlash even, that's happening. Even even yesterday when they came out with their earnings report, their sales report, their their sales plummeted again, and the CEO. Uh, has come out and said, oh, no, it had nothing to do with this uh, transgender bathroom thing. That's just sales this, <laughs> this time of year down. But their sales are down there almost 10% since they made the announcement. But just yesterday uh, and the day before, their sales just dropped like a lead balloon. And so they are trying to cover and claim that this had nothing to do with the report. I read the entire report that he made. And it had it had it, it carried no foundation basis water whatever you want to say it's uh, it's obviously a drop directly in response and for the company to already lose uh, between five and seven billion and the reason I give you those parameters is because sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down but since they've made this announcement their stock has dropped between five and seven billion and the arrogance that they continue to say this is the right policy. Well, it's fine. They're trading off their uh, uh, their company's uh, value and their future in support of something that only that is that only affects truly only less than one percent, uh, one one tenth of one percent of of the population of this country. So we have to ask ourselves, ourselves what is the real agenda? And it's obviously to get rid of the the gender distinction entirely so that there's no male there's no female and it's a destruction of the family and the destruction of family values and rights and freedoms don't you think gentlemen i'll call yes, you I gentlemen. Do. absolutely, oh, you're absolutely right, it's, a Paul, no doubt about it. it's a demonstration of this failed obama administration it's just another piece of the puzzle of how crazy that this administration is. And I want to thank you both very much for your time. I'm going to go to let other people have time, but I'm going to keep listening. You thank guys you. are awesome. Thank you very thank much you. for your call, Dave. Bye-bye. Alex, here's the bottom line. What can we do to encourage our legislators to go back to a gold standard? Now, I know that there's another push for a, an audit of the Fed. Do you think that's going to go anywhere? That's a good question. You know, the, the pressure for the audit the Fed legislation now is immense. And, yeah, the Federal Reserve can print money out of thin air and use it to hire lobbyists, which they've done, actually. They, they hired uh, some of the top lobbyists to go lobby on Capitol Hill in favor of, uh, you know, continued secrecy. And, really, they're more secretive than the CIA. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, but the pressure for this is just so huge. I mean, the last poll that I saw was something like more than 80% of the American people wanted to know what was going on at the Fed. And you, you have to wonder what's wrong with the other yeah. uh, 18, 17%, whatever it is, who, uh, who doesn't or don't know. Uh, I have to just assume that they really don't um, have any understanding of this issue. But transparency is so basic. And when you're talking about an institution as powerful as the Federal Reserve that literally has the power of life and death over our economy, the idea that these people should operate in secret is just 
flabbergasting. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. There's no excuse for it whatsoever. Uh, they say, well, we want our monetary independence. Well, you know, allowing us to see what you're doing is not going to affect your monetary independence unless you're going to change what you're doing because people are watching. Alex, we've uh, you know, got to go to a, the dark. We've got to go to another force break. We'll be back a, a, in a few minutes after these words Attention from our sponsors. Gun owners. A gun trust can keep your family safe from becoming accidental felons and protect your privacy, at least until July 13th, when new laws go into effect. Intervivos Law Firm can help with your legal questions. Speak with attorney Garrett Smith and find out what you can do about it. A zero one four seven seven fifteen seventy, and be sure to mention KTALK for your free legal consultation. Gun laws affecting privacy of gun owners are changing on July 13th. It's urgent. Call now, 801-477-1570. That's 801-477-1570. Hi, it's Sherilyn Eager with the Liberty Lineup Show. As a mom and a grandma, I really care about my family's health. Over the years, I've been the one to find the doctors and services. So if you're like me, I was deeply troubled by the Obamacare mandate and its invasion of my privacy. But now, I've found an alternative that gives me and my family freedom from insurance. It's called Medical Cost Share, and we absolutely love it. Medical Cost Share exempts us from the Obamacare mandate, including the IRS penalties. And we can choose and keep our doctors and hospitals because there are no networks, no HMOs, no PPOs, and we can take it with us anywhere in the country. It even includes naturopathic and other alternative treatments. I love that the shared expenses do not include abortion services or other socially objectionable practices. And the best part is it costs a whole lot less. For a special offer for our listeners, go to medicalcostshare.com forward slash opt out now. That's medical costshare.com forward slash opt out now it's not insurance it's better quality public education is vital to utah's future and it starts with parents and teachers working together not far away bureaucrats and one size fits all programs sadly this is exactly what governor herbert has brought utah with common core sage testing and by giving the federal secretary of education veto power over utah's education plan his message to Utah parents and teachers? Bureaucrats know better than you. This is wrong. On the other hand, Jonathan Johnson, Republican candidate for governor, and his running mate, Robin Bagley, are committed to ending the Common Core mandate and SAGE testing, to ensuring local control and a voice for Utah parents, to reducing needless bureaucracy and empowering teachers, and to finding ways to increase teacher salaries. Utah can and must do education better. To learn more details about Jonathan's education plan, visit HireJJ.com. Paid for by Johnson for Governor. Back to K-Talk, 6.30 a.m. and sign the news. You know, this uh, whole audit the Fed thing, uh, Alex, started with uh, former Senator Rand Paul, uh, Ron Paul, sorry, excuse me, his father, Ron, uh, Ron Paul from Texas, and he's been a voice behind it, and it's still being heard. So I think that there's going to be a milestone uh, decision sometime today or tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. So they are. The, it is gaining strength, and more people are interested. And as more people are pressuring their representatives in in Washington to seek an audit of the Fed, it uh, it seems to be gaining traction. And boy, this scares the Federal Reserve to death. I've heard that trillions are missing and unaccounted for. What's your what uh, what is, is your experience? And we've got a couple of callers that want to chime in. Yeah, my understanding is that uh, the members of Congress are under enormous pressure from their constituents. Uh, you know, it's not a lot of things that motivate people to call their uh, member of Congress and say, hey, I need you to support this bill or I need you to reject this bill. But um, I know that the audit the Fed issue has brought out huge amounts of phone calls, huge amounts of emails, and even members of Congress who, you know, would normally do the bidding of the establishment, uh, they're worried about their political future because this is one of those types of issues where, you know, if your member of Congress votes against auditing the Fed, that's it. You know, you're, you're, there's nothing they could do to earn your vote back because you know that they're hacks for the establishment. And so I think that, uh, you know, even with Obama's veto threat, uh, I think there's a good chance that this could become law. Every time it's been voted on in the House, it's passed by overwhelming margins. 
so, you know, it's, I think it's encouraging. Well, I thought f- clear back to, uh, to 1996, Harry Reid really pushed for auditing the Fed, but when it actually came up for a vote, he not only voted against it, uh, he voted to, to, uh, to vote it down, but he also uh, campaigned strongly against aud- auditing the Fed. So uh, I wonder what happened there. We, we've got a caller on. Go ahead, uh, Jarrell. And for the two other callers that we lost, uh, please be patient. We're, we'll get to you. All right, uh, Jarrell, go ahead. You, you, oh, my gosh, I hung up on him. Is that when I pushed the button, it hung up like it did it has in the past. Uh, call us back, Jarrell, and anybody else who uh, we lost. We lost three callers. Apologize. Go ahead, uh, Alex. Uh, and then I wanted to try to, if, you w- if we want to just summarize what this is all about, let's do that and then... Uh, then let's uh, go on to another topic. Uh, is this uh, Jarrell? Did you call us back? Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, Jarrell. Um, how can anybody be confused or there be any type of an issue as to what sex they are for this bathroom issue or the showering issue? It's simple math. Look down and under. If you have one, you're a son. If you if you're not, if not, if you have none, then you know you're female. Well, it's, I know it's an XXXY issue chromosome, but they're now coming out. You heard about the guy Monday who came in and burned his birth certificate and said uh, no one had to write the right to assign me gender at birth. And so, uh, by, and that be, it begs the question, who, who is the one that assigned it? <laughs> well, well, what they're really well, doing here is waging war on reality and waging war on, on actually what God has done. Right. And, you know, there are some people who I think who are legitimately uh, have some problems. You know, they have some mental problems. And and I think that's I think the way to understand this. Uh, It's very severe confusion. You have, for example, these bulimics and anorexics who think, uh, you know, that they're way overweight and they need to stop eating or they need to barf every time after they're done eating. But nobody in their right mind would suggest that we play along with this delusion and say, oh, yeah, you really are fat, just to kind of confirm their delusion. It's absolutely absurd. You would be doing incredible damage to these people. And the same is true with this transgender issue. Actually, the American College of Pediatrics came out and said that that, uh, playing along with this and and, and convincing a child that they can change their gender, either with surgery or uh, taking hormones, that it's tantamount to child abuse. And I think that's the light that we need to consider it in. What you're doing is incredibly harmful to little children. Uh, the overwhelming majority, I forget the exact numbers, but I think it was 80 to 90 percent of children who expressed some confusion about their gender during their childhood, uh, or, you know, say they wish they were the other, uh, they end up totally normal. If they have some guidance with their parent, from their parents, you know, no, sorry, God made you a boy or God made you a girl, that's how it is. Uh, you know, they, they end up, they, they grow up and they're totally normal. It never occurs to them again that they might be some other gender. But when you confirm these delusions, when you say, oh, maybe you really are a, a girl trapped in a boy's body or whatever, uh, let's get you hormones, let's get you surgery, uh, you're doing damage to them for life. I mean, you're increasing their suicide risk by 10,000%. It's just off the charts. It's unbelievable. It's abusive. And Obama is trying to demand that every government school in this country become a partner in abusing children, in child abuse. And it's unacceptable. It's absolutely crazy. There's another issue that's bigger than, than the uh, two. I've got to say it's a simple math problem. You either have one or none. But if, if you can't figure that out, then you probably have been trained in common core math. But <laughs> okay. to, uh, 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 Jarrell, did you, uh, good, good comment. Did you also have a comment about the Federal Reserve? Yes, um, G. Edward Griffin wrote an excellent book called "The Jekyll from uh, the Creature from Jekyll Island" that gets into the whole uh, thing about the Federal Reserve, the secrecy, the debates over it, how the later um, consequences of it, and I just wanted to mention that really quickly. Yeah, that that's a book that everyone should read. I mean, all right, thank you. Yep. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, let's get to another caller real quick, and then let's try to get back to some of these topics. Uh, you're on, Corey. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, well, I actually had a comment and question about uh, this, the recent executive order about the, the transgender bathroom thing and the Federal Reserve kind of tying it together. Every time they do something like this, you know that this is just it's BS it doesn't really go anywhere, but man, it sure gets everyone in an uproar, 
and takes everyone's eyes off the ball. And it seems like every time they do something like this, they're doing something else behind their back. I just want to know. Red herring. Have. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, just to distract you while they're doing something real in the back room. So I don't know what they did. I, But I'm waiting for it to come out now. Also, about auditing the Federal Reserve, um, when you audit something, you're trying to make sure that they did what they say they were going to do or what they were supposed to do. But the Federal Reserve was never supposed to do anything except for what it's been doing, which is screwing us all over. And so if they go in and audit to make sure that they've been doing what they said they were going to do, they're going to find out that they're on the up and up. They have been screwing us over. But what my question is, what to what end? Are we, is someone going to actually go in and say, all right, we're stopping this bull crap and we're going to get printing money back in the hands of Congress? Yeah, that's my question. No, that, that, well, that, I, I, that's a good question, Corey, and that begs my question that I had on my mind. Thanks for calling, Corey. And that is, uh, isn't there going to be a huge amount of blowback from the powers that be, uh, from the globalists and the Re- Federal Reserve against these states, against Tennessee and, and against Texas that are putting in these uh, – depositories ba- based upon gold and silver deposits? Well, uh, my guess is that they that there's some people in a room somewhere, maybe even right now, certainly uh, uh, within the not-too-distant past, and I'm so sure they'll be meeting again, deciding what they need to do about this. Because it, the, the thing that the Federal Reserve has going for it is a monopoly, right? It has a monopoly given to it by Congress on the printing of currency. And uh, if that monopoly were undermined, if people suddenly realized they could uh, engage in commerce using uh, money that's not unstable, money that's not going to be losing its value from, uh, you know, one day to the next, I think it would pose a serious threat to them. So I'm sure that uh, the owners of the Federal Reserve are plotting somewhere uh, what they're going to do, how they're going to react to all this. And, you know, for sure they'll start with the ridicule, they'll start demonizing, they'll say, oh, these are extremists, these are uh, radicals, these are something, who knows what. Uh, but, you know, they, they're, they're going to have a tough time doing that. Every member of the legislature in Tennessee voted in favor of this, every Republican and every Democrat. So they're going to have a hard time trying to paint that as a fringe issue or a extremism or radical or whatever. But, so uh, they'll just the use question, their, their powers within the legislative system and the Department of Justice and all their lackeys in Congress and the Senate in Washington to do their bidding to overthrow whatever. And we've had a, we've had a, a, a saying here that we need to – clean the house and flush the senate and uh, i just think it's time for a, a radical change all the way around and and just exchange what's in washington with all new people so that there's no virus that can pass on to those who enter the house and the senate as freshmen who make all these promises in their in their uh, campaigns to get rid of Obamacare, to get rid of uh, Planned Parenthood funding, and many, many other intrusions by the federal government. And they, as soon as they get there, they get the virus, they get sick, and they forget every promise they made and why they were elected and put there. So I, I guess they'll use right. every tool, in their every arrow in their quiver to overcome this because it, Brexit is a perfect example. They're pulling out all stops to keep uh, Great Britain, the U.K., from exiting the European Union, I think they'll do the same thing in, in, in effect with the control of their money. But having said that, Alex, aren't they acutely aware that the system is failing, it's falling fast, it's going to implode, and, and it is not going to be effective, and we are going to have some sort of financial crash in the future, whatever you say, maybe not this year, not yet next year, not after, but some, at some point it is going to crash. Aren't they aware of that? I, I think they know that very well, and I think that was kind of baked into the cake from the start. But I think they've already planned for that. They already know where they want to go from here, and they've actually told us. Uh, I, I did a cover story package, big investigation, uh, must have been five or six years ago now. Uh, so it's not a new thing uh, where they were openly telling us we were going to move toward a global currency run by the International Monetary Fund. And actually, the, the IMF already kind of runs its own little proto-global currency. It's called the SDR, the Special Drawing Rights. And, uh, you know, the globalists and the politicians, not just from the United States, uh, but from all over the place. And, uh, Treasury Secretary uh, Timothy Turbotax Geithner, the guy who uh, didn't pay his taxes because of Turbotax, uh, they asked him, he said, what do you think of this uh, communist Chinese proposal to have a global currency run by the IMF? 
and says, oh, we're actually quite open to that. Oops, right? So, uh, you know, there, there's no doubt that they are planning for what happens once this whole system comes crashing down. The question is, will they succeed in building what they want to build, which is this kind of new world currency that will be, uh, I think at the start, probably based on a basket of currencies as the SDR is. The Chinese yuan was recently added. Uh, of course, you have the British pound, the euro, the U.S. dollar, etc., uh, the Japanese yen. Uh, and then maybe eventually it would be even more independent than that. And people need to think through the implications of this, right? I mean, if, if, look at how the federal government operates today. So much of the wickedness that they engage in is made possible by the fact that they have this partnership with this central bank called the Federal Reserve that allows them to print money out of thin air, uh, well, based on debt, actually, which is even worse than printing it out of thin air. Uh, and then just saddling it up, so basically stealing from the American people quietly without uh, arousing too much suspicion. Now imagine if they could do this at the global level, right? The UN already has its own little uh, armies, right? This uh, UN peacekeeping force that goes around literally uh, raping women and children all over the world. Uh, and there was just hearings of, about this in Congress um, last month. They have uh, the Interpol, right, the self-styled international law enforcement agency. They have their international court that likes to pretend like it has jurisdiction over the American people. So they have the entire architecture here of what they call global governance. Now, if they could add a printing press to that, right, and, and quietly rob all of humanity of its wealth to fund this, uh, you know, it would be a very, very serious problem. So people should be aware of this. And, you know, there, there's no theory here, actually. Um, the, these people have been openly talking about building a global currency for over a decade now, and that's their plan. The question is whether the American people will let that happen. Well, this has been a great show. Uh, we planned on talking about four different topics. We were able to talk about one and a half, <laughs> but that's great. <laughs> we're glad to have you with us this morning, Alex, and we will expect you back and look forward to your visit next Thursday from 8 to 9 a.m., and we appreciate you uh, sacrificing your time and, and appreciate you letting us rob all your knowledge from you and sharing it with Thank our you listeners. Thank so much, Paul. Okay, we'll talk to you next week. Uh, folks, we'll be back uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 7 o'clock, and we'll be talking to uh, 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 Harley Slanger. And then at 8 o'clock, we'll have Joel Skousen on World Affairs Brief. Hi, this is Alan Blood with Capital Financial Group. With home values increasing and low rates still available, now is the perfect time to refinance your home. Capital Financial Group, we have loan programs to fit your refinance needs, whether you want to pull cash out from your home, decrease your interest rate and monthly payment, or just reduce your loan to a 15-year payoff. We have programs that will help you refinance even if your income or credit is less than it used to be or if you're underwater on your mortgage. Instead of getting lost in the shuffle of a big bank or paying high fees at a credit union, call us and we'll help you refinance with the best rates and lowest closing costs for you. You may even qualify for one of our no-closing-cost loans. Call me today, Alan Blood, at 801-298-5887 to start saving money on your mortgage now. 801-298-5887, NMLS number 3146. The cloud. It may sound nebulous, vague, hazy, but the value of cloud computing for your workforce can be very real indeed. That's why thousands of organizations of all types and sizes are deploying in the Kronos Cloud, transforming the way they access workforce management solutions to reduce labor costs, improve workforce productivity, and minimize compliance risk. For a clear view of the Kronos Cloud, visit Kronos.com. Kronos, workforce innovation that works. I'm Bill. I'm a 51-year-old man, but this is like what I sounded like to lenders. That's because I like co-signed a loan with my 19-year-old daughter two years ago. So like her credit mistakes became my credit mistakes. Then I decided to get serious about my FICO score. So I signed up for Experian. Now I get alerts if something affects my credit. I can clear it up before it becomes a problem. So lenders can meet the real me, a father who needs to have a little talk with his daughter. Get serious about your credit. Get Experian. Go to Experian.com and start your credit tracker trial membership today. You're listening to Utah's first number one talk station, K Talk AM 630, KTKK, Sandy Salt Lake City. The whole truth and nothing but the truth.
Special report, Egypt Air Flight 804. I'm Evan Haining. An Egyptian plane searching for that missing Egyptian Airbus has located two orange items in the Mediterranean. Correspondent Ian Lee reports. It's not concluded yet whether these two pieces of debris are related to the aircraft, but it is in the area of the search. This is something that's coming from Greek authorities. Well, 66 people were on board when the Paris to Cairo flight crashed into the sea earlier today. Correspondent Athena Jones reports the U.S. is offering assistance. We know the U.S. is already standing by, ready to help. The combined task force, CTF-67, is making preparations to help if they are called on. This is according uh, to a U.S. Uh, military official. Russian Security Chief Alexander Bortnikov says in all likelihood the Egypt air flight crash was caused by terrorists. He also says his agency has tracked down a group working to prepare Paris-style attacks in big Russian cities. I'm Evan Haining. California's Water Board says there has been enough winter rain, snow in the Sierras, and enough water saving over the past year that statewide water restrictions can be lifted. For now. For now, meaning if there comes another water deficit, the California Water Resources Control Board has the power to re-restrict water use. So we're pretty confident that they're going to comply. They know how precious water is. Board spokesman George Castirico says the 400 or so local water districts will now be in charge of the flow. The districts will have to give the water board a plan, stick to it, and report water levels each month to ensure that each district has enough water to last three years if things get bad again, water-wise. And residents are asked to continue saving 20% percent at least. Jim Roop, Los Angeles. House Republicans and Democrats have agreed on a breakthrough deal to help rescue Puerto Rico from $70 billion in debt. Right now, the Dow is down about 1%, as is the S&P and the